Cheers, cheers, cheers. A very good morning to one and all. To start with, request all to raise for the national anthem. Shri Awardi 2022, Shri Anil K. Rajvamshi Sir, Chief Vigilance Officer HAL Ms. Kalyani Sedaraman, Executive Director HAL Management Academy Dr. Srikanth Sharma, General Manager Vigilance Srimadhi Rajashri Sharma, and all the participants gathered here and online as well. Myself, Ranjit Senior Manager Vigilance is pleased to welcome each and everyone for today's talk. However, with all your permission, a few minutes of this auspicious event are taken for the release of a book, that is HAL Vigilance Manuals, Vigilance Department, Revised ISO Manual, accompanied with a book on standard operating procedure. I request Executive Director, HAL Management Academy, and CVO, and other dignitaries for the release of this book. Coming back to the talk, for Vigilance Department, today is a long-awaited day. Anil Sir's speech was decided long way back by CVO ma'am as part of our periodic lecture series organized by Vigilance Department. We are so glad that it materialized today. Related with today's talk on nation building genuine and happiness, I would like to mention a famous quote that is, to get India stronger, to get India stronger, first strengthen its roots. And our roots are our countries, interiors, rural areas, and villages. Thus, we are fortunate to have with us today one of the eminent speakers and a pioneer in the field of technology-based rural development, a true kind of nation building. I would like to request CBO man to give a special welcome to the today's guest speaker with a bouquet of flowers. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, the audience for today's session are newly recruited management trainees who are young engineers, vigilance officers of HAL, and faculties of HAL Management Academy. Participants, the talk will be followed by question and answer session. Request all to make it interactive. Now I request Srimadi Gladys, manager vigilance, to introduce the speaker's profile. Good morning to one and all. 
I am very delightful to read the profile of Dr. Anil K. Rajvanshi, Padma Shri Awadi and a spiritual engineer. Dr. Anil K. Rajvanshi, pioneering rural development work for the last four decades, has spanned the whole spectrum of areas affecting the lives of rural populations such as renewable energy-based cooking and lighting, power generation from agricultural residues, electric cycle rickshaws, water purification, and effluent treatment through the use of renewable energy. Sir was the first person to promote the use of high technology for rural development, an idea that is vogue nowadays. Sir was born and raised in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. Sir has done his bachelor and master degree in mechanical engineering at IIT Kanpur. In 1979, received PhD from University of Florida, United States of America, and taught for two and a half years. In 1981, Sir returned to India to apply his training for developing rural India and established the energy and sustainable development work at Nimkar Agricultural Research Institute, Paltan, Maharashtra. Sir's main achievements are principal author of National Policy on Self-Sufficient Taluka which is being managed by MNRE in the year 1996. This is the precursor of National Biomass Power Plant Program and was probably the inspiration behind PURA program. The group pioneered the development of electric rickshaws in 1990s, first person to initiate a program of e-rickshaws in the country developed a unique program of improving cooking and lighting technology for rural areas. Consequently, SERS Group developed the multi-fuel, Nuri Latin, multi-fuel, land stove, and the whole issue of rural lighting and cooking technology strategy. SERS awards and publications are, in 2001, received the prestigious Jamnalal Bajaj Award for the use of science and technology in rural technology, India, from Dr. Manmohan Singh. In 1998, became the second Indian to be inducted in the US-based Solar Hall of Fame. Sir's efforts led to NERI getting FICCI Platinum Jubilee Award in 2002 from Honorable Prime Minister Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. His work on ethanol land stove was given the 2009 Globe Forum Award for Sustainability Research in Stockholm from HRH Crown Princess Victoria. In 2014, Sir became the first Indian to receive the Distinguished Almanaz Award of University of Florida, USA in 2022 received the Distinguished Alumnus Award of IIT Kanpur and was also named as one of the legends of IIT Kanpur. In the same year, Government of India honored him with one of the highest civilian awards, Padma Shri. Sir has delivered prestigious endowed lectures and his achievements have been covered in mass media, both nationally and internationally. Sir has more than 250 publications, some of them in prestigious national and international journals. Seven patents, five books, and various chapters in books too. To name the few, in 2014, Sir wrote about the human interest story of his work on renewable energy. In 2016, Sir published his autobiography, and in 2019, his latest ebook, Exploring the Mind of God, How Technology Guided by Spirituality Can Produce Happiness. Both, the, both these books are freely available on the net. Sir believes that spirituality with high technology should be the mantra of India's development and practices what he preaches. Thank you.
Over to you, sir. I am delighted to be here, and I must thank Kalyani ji for inviting me. Uh, I am really honored because I love to speak to youngsters. This is my mission in life because you are the future of this country, and you are going to drive this country, make this, take this forward. You can go abroad, but come back. I am sure that a lot of you would like to go abroad, but I think this country can also become great by just being here and solving the problems of this country. Today, I am going to talk, which I talk a lot to different IITs, etc., nation building, genuine, and happiness. Uh, I run a small NGO. I am my wife. In fact, she is a Nimkar, so she is my boss. And uh, we met in the United States in 1970s, when she was also doing her PhD. And we married there and then came back in a fit of madness, which I'll, which I'll talk about. And uh, since 1980s, we have been in this place. All our work that we do is on our website. It's a very extensive website. Please go through it. And we are always looking for good people, because you cannot have good work unless until good people come and work in rural areas. All of you would like to stay in Bangalore, Bombay, Pune, but 55 to 60 percent of our population lives in rural areas. And unless until you help them, unless until we pull them up, India will not become a great country or a Vishwaguru that some leaders talk about. I just push this. Talk. What is nation building? Janoon and how it produces happiness. All my life I have worked on Janoon. That is the reason why with all whatever I did in America, I left everything and came to India. That is Janoon. And you achieve great things when you have Janoon, passion. I will talk a little bit about my personal example because I think that has a much more impact. So I'll tell you a little bit about my Janoon. Then we'll talk about a little bit of the work that we do at our institute. What can you do and what are the challenges as engineers? And how we can all work together in producing a wholesome society and a great India. Because this is exactly what we should be doing at. We should not think about the politicians. We should not think about anything else. We should look at the problems just six foot from our nose and try to solve them through our science and technology. And if you do that, this country will become great because each one of us will contribute in nation building. Now, before I go, I would like to share with you a very small thing. The starter of HEL was Seth uh, Hirachan Walchan. Seth Hirachan Walchan is very closely related to my wife's family. I had a great satisfaction of meeting his only daughter, stayed in their house also in Bombay. And the uh, future would have been different if her father was supposed to be married to the granddaughter of Hirachan Walchan. If it had happened, I don't think Nandini would have gone. <laughs> Hirachan Walchan, because you see, you are in HAL. HAL is one of the very prime PSUs. Anytime you are in any organization, go back to the history. Find out who started it. Find out about it. One of the saddest part that I see in the youngsters is they don't read. You know, this country is full of great examples. And you will get tremendous amount of inspiration by knowing their examples how great people, my father went to jail with Gandhiji. I had, I never met Gandhiji because I was born two and a half years after his death. But I met a lot of people who worked with Gandhiji. And you get inspiration because these were great souls. These were great people who changed the course of the world history, not only India, the world history. So read about these things. And then you will know what 
pioneered what made them do these great things and this will give you inspiration that there is and you know in those times the situation was even worse today the situation is very good but in those times when there was no resources etc and yet they did wonders set up companies same with the tatas same with the jamshed ji tata so many of these people did things which at that time was nearly impossible so get the inspiration from them anyway that is all part of the nation building so what is nation building the basis of life is happiness can you tell can a single person in this audience tell me that you work for not for happiness people have different definitions of happiness but you all work where you feel happy where you all work so that you think that you will get happiness whatever it is they have different uh, definitions good job happy family basic creature comforts healthy and wholesome environment these are all some 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 uh, uh, you know definitions these are not my definition because i think that you get happiness by is a state of mind and a powerful and deep thinking mind produces happiness and giving back to society i think produces happiness and you will be surprised simple thing that you can do in giving back to society in whatever manner it is up to you to decide but you feel very high and i have always felt because when i used to talk with people who worked with gandhi ji that what made gandhi ji do things and i think he just felt high in trying to do something different in trying to change whatever was surrounding him he didn't think about how it will give uh, independence etc that came later on but his whole process was how to change the environment that he was a part of it and it will be wonderful how many of you have read gandhi ji's life gandhi about gandhi ji how many of you it is not fashionable nowadays to read about gandhi ji isn't it but to my mind he was the greatest person to be born on this planet earth in the last 200 years and i think it will be worth remembering reading and it is amazing what he wrote what he said and i think some of you will be inspired and will learn something about it gandhi was so great that einstein one of the greatest scientists thought he was like god my father's friend who was a close associate of gandhi ji went to united states as a eisenhower fellow this is 1954 einstein was very old he would not give any uh, appointment to anybody because he didn't want to meet people but when he came to know that a close associate of gandhi was coming he immediately gave an appointment 45 minutes appointment and mr ratanlal joshi he was his name he himself told me he says i went and uh, i met him at in princeton and he started asking did gandhi laugh did gandhi do this to him gandhi was a god and after he says 10 minutes i thought that i have come to interview to einstein and einstein was interviewing me so he said you know we youngsters always felt that you were the father of the atomic bomb and he got very wild because he was very pacifist and one of the reasons why he liked gandhi was because of the pacifism and because of the great soul that he felt gandhi was and he got very upset and the interview was closed but his in, you know he was inspired by gandhi he met nehru he never met gandhi but he was inspired by gandhi and i personally think that if you read about gandhi ji don't read about all the nonsense that comes today in the whatsapp please read about gandhi i'm sure that there is a library you have a lot of books please read he was a great man you don't have to read everything and follow him because you know people are a prisoner of their times but read between the lines because they are all these great people are great visionaries and what he thought in fact i have written extensively on gandhi ji how his ideas on sustainability and etc are as relevant today as what he wrote in 1920 2020 2025 and is amazing that how ahead of time he was so creating a happy and wholesome environment is nation building well, how many of you would like to go abroad tell me honestly nobody is going to 
secure after, afterwards. How many? How, 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 how come? This is very, very amazing. You are all very, very patriotic, or you don't want to tell in front of your... Most, uh, yes. So you want to go abroad. Now, why would you like to go abroad? Huh? No, that, that, that's fine. But did they come from uh, Mars or Moon? They are a product of this uh, world. And, and who runs uh, most of these big organizations in America? Indians. So our genetic code is really great. Why can't we create an environment here? In our own country. In our own country. They all come back to India every year because they want to meet their families. Quite painful to a lot of them. So why? In my in my um, uh, batch, I'm the only one who came back and stayed here. And not only that, the whole IIT is full of uh, examples where they have all gone. But the, we should ask ourselves. We should not blame them. We should ask ourselves, and we are the all uh, people of this country. How do we create an environment that will make us happy here? And that is nation building. Nation building is nothing. The structures of HAL or anything. Nation building is an environment. When you feel happy, when you like to be reborn in this country, we all believe in the reincarnation, at least most people believe, you would like to be reborn in this country and help in this country and create a swark, whatever it is, that is nation building. And I'm sure that we are all capable of. It is just that we have not applied our mind. We are all capable of because we do wonderful things when we go abroad. Every major nation, I do not know how many of you have you read the people who are coming to the dinner of Mr. Modi with Biden. 90% are Indians who are doing great work in America. It's amazing how Indians have really risen to very high levels in American administration and the companies and the um, uh, uh, other systems. And they are the part of the cream of the country. I mean, Indians have beaten Jews at their own game. We are the richest, not we, but the Indians are the richest now in America, and they are into the very main systems. So why can't we create the conditions here? That is what I would like to discuss. So create an environment where you would like to be live, raise your family, and feel that it is a place you would like to be reborn. And I'm sure that a lot of us would like to stay in this country because you cannot change the color of your skin. I stayed for nine years, eight years. I was the president of India Association in, in those times in 1970s. And um, uh, even now, you cannot change the color of your skin. You cannot change sometimes your accent. So the whites always will consider you as inferior, which is, which is wrong. But this is always the case. This is your country. Make this great. And make all of us should make it very sustainable. Janoon is defined as obsession, passion, even madness. When you have, I'm sure that you have worked on some projects where you got so involved, the time was lost, everything was lost. There was a Janoon to solve the problem, starting from your high school to doing your projects, etc. And that is a Janoon that you should cultivate in your life. Because when you do that, all the pinpricks vanish, all other things vanish, and you focus on the thing at hand. And that is exactly what yoga is. Patanjali defines yoga as a thought on a single object or subject for a very long time. So you collect, you develop a janoon, and that is what he calls a samadhi. And that is exactly what, if you do that, then you become happy, because the brain has a mechanism when it is running at full steam, then it just gets a very high. This is, this is the mechanism of the brain. When all the neurons are firing towards a single thought, then you get a very high. And that is the basis of all ecstasy and everything, is that, that when the brain works at its full capacity, it becomes very happy. 
helps focus on work at hand and produces a very powerful mind and when you do that that mind becomes very powerful <clears throat> and you can focus on anything and you get the result and that is the start of happiness and that's the start of creating great things because when you are uh, you know very happy and very when you are contented you can focus on the great ideas or great things creativity creativity if you think carefully you all live on this campus bangalore has become so notorious going a 2 kilometers it takes you one and a half hour when you are driving your motorcycle is very difficult to think about the problems you are all the time worried about when will you reach etc so these are the pin pricks that happen how do we create conditions by which we are able to have a very nice life simple life where you can focus on creativity and that is what is really part of the nation building it makes you spiritual since you think deeply spirituality is nothing else but thinking deeply on any thought for a very long time so that the object and the subject vanish only its spirit remains and that exactly is the spirituality and when you do that it has nothing to do with religion is completely different from religion but it is a part of going deeper inside you and thinking deeply junoon helps in getting happiness and a desire to do things out of the ordinary i can talk from my own example where i left everything and came to india and that was because of junoon when i look back i can i just sometimes shudder how i left everything and came to a place called fulton from where to make a phone call i would hop on the bus for 4 hours go to pune and make phone calls that was fulton i went to some of the most prestigious schools in lucknow then i went to iit kanpur which was the most prestigious institute in this country then to a very well known university university of florida taught there for two and a half years and came back that was junoon and madness something to do and that junoon is what kept me going in what i had done all other things and pin pricks are forgotten even time when you have junoon empty mind is a devil's workshop when you don't have anything to think about you think about money am i getting enough money my friend is getting more money should i jump into to that you don't think about the work you don't think about anything else just money because that becomes the focal point of your life junoon will ward pressures from family and peers it makes you do things that you want to do and not what others want you to do that is where the biggest problem lies when you start thinking that you know what others will may think then that is where the problem starts because you do work what others want you to not what you think when i came back people said that i was doing harakari i never i became i was very thick skinned i didn't uh, listen to it so i said what i'll do is my own thing darwari said wanted me to be the director of tata energy research institute this in 1981 tata energy research institute was just starting i said you know you help me in the my rural area he was polite he said yeah, i'll do it but he was not very convinced about that but do it always what you want to do world is moved from forward by people who have junoon einstein newton von braun gandhi buddha they all have junoons you are all in aeronautical engineering how many of you know about von braun come on these guys are amazing huh? you are in the rockets you are in the aeronautical you don't know what one the father of v2 rocket the father of actually the modern rocketry is von braun the german who designed the rockets for einstein for uh, hitler who came to united states and became the top person in nasa in fact all the nasa's program on rocketry was run by von braun the reason why i told you because i had a great distinction of meeting von braun in america my professor had a nasa's uh, got the nasa's highest award for the saturn 5 rocket design and von braun had come to our uh, university and i met him because my father my professor introduced him uh, that he's my student so i had a 5 10 minute chat and then i became so interested i read his history what he was 
and it was amazing that hitler wanted him to do a lot of other things but he was more interested in developing the whole science of rocket science and technology of rockets what he will use it for it was not his concern and the same thing happened in the development of atomic bomb it is a junoon these people get involved in all these things because it is a junoon to understand the science because we are curious by nature the human being and we want to do something wonderful how it will be used is not their concern the father of hydrogen bomb was my colleague in university of florida stanley ulam and i used to, and he was a very close friend of for me and he used to i used to ask him ki what made you go into manhattan project he said it was just the love for developing this fantastic new thing how it will be used we were not concerned that was that we left to the military so that is what janoon does it makes you do something wonderful you go deeper into it and you really try to solve and understand what nature is my janoon i was born and raised in lucknow janoon to become an engineer i was inspired by steam engines when i was a child <clears throat> the most important thing was to go and stand in front of the steam engine in the station and to look at this massive um, uh, you know uh, machine and i thought that the man who put the oil was the best person because he was the one who really made it moving and then later on i found out that the driver was better than him so but that is how the engineering today i think uh, most of the students most of the youngsters they don't look at these things because everything is enclosed but this was a great inspiration for me then at the 13th birthday my father being you know uh, swatantra senani he gave me the autobiography of gandhi ji in hindi it was unbelievable i went to the poshus english school but he gave me this book in hindi it changed my life it was like a switch and based upon what i read <clears throat> i started understanding reading about uh, spiritual books it just i can't explain but it's just like a switch and the meditation and everything and i have always felt that that gave me the genuine that gave me that thing to look deeply concentration and this is my desire to how do i tell the youngsters that this is what you should do because it really changed my life it made me a different person and i think this is what we should do it's nothing to do with religion it is nothing to do with anything else it's just the inner understanding and finding the inner peace then engineering was the next thing so i studied very hard and uh, my je was 29th and at the time there were no uh, you know these schools were coaching schools so but we studied hard and uh, you got and then uh, iit kanpur was the best and i have written a very big article in fact narayan murthy was my contemporary so he really liked that uh, article because i wrote about iit kanpur in those days we we had a lot of good people great people that who are who's who in, uh, in india who were my contemporaries in those times and uh, it was iit in making there were very few buildings very hot but there was some thing there in that uh, institute for us to study to do something interesting today the iit students are how many of you are from iit kanpur or iits none today the life of iit and is very great the food is fantastic the livings are fantastic this modern swimming pool modern um, uh, so people uh, spend sometimes 6 6 years in graduating yeah this is the way of life and i uh, discussed with the uh, id directors i said why can't you throw them out he says mhrd will not allow us so this is the uh, life in our times we wanted to get out as fast as possible because the living conditions the were pretty uh, um, very uh, basic and the food was the worst food i have ever eaten in my life in iit kanpur uh, mess and um, uh, so this was the d- difference now and then then there was a tremendous genuine for knowledge iit kanpur in those times had some of one of the best library because it was funded by america so it was you know one very unique thing about iit kanpur was that we studied extensively on humanity subjects i took nine humanity subjects and whatever i am today 
is because of humanity. And it is a really tragedy in this country that we are removing the humanities from the engineering core curriculum. And it is very sad because we become a well-rounded personality when you read humanities, literature, philosophy, psychology. This is something to be read. In fact, I hope that the um, uh, teachers here should also make your MBA students read humanities besides their MBA because it is what makes you a very well-rounded personality. And so it really kindled in me the knowledge. I used to spend most of my time in the library, mastered most of the classics, the English literature, etc., and uh, just the Janoon. And again, the USA education got involved in huge number of areas, the thirst for knowledge. When, when I went to this university, naturally university systems in America in 1970s, etc., there was a zameen asman farak between India and uh, America. Nobel laureates and, you know, all different great people, the great intellectual environment. And when you get involved in that, you just, I, I could understand why people don't come back. But that's what we would like to make it here. And in those times, it was very difficult because there was no internet. So you had to go into the library to read. Today, you may be sitting in a village outside Bangalore, looking at the same material as somebody in Boston at MIT or Harvard in Boston would be reading that. There's no difference. So you can, you have the same knowledge as somebody in the best institutes in the world, and yet we don't utilize that knowledge because you're spending all your time in sending an SMS and being on the social media. What a tragedy. We have a huge amount of literature, huge amount of information on the internet, utilize it. And that is how we will make this country a great country. Oops. And in this process, money somehow never entered in the vision field. Because when I left everything and came to India, there was no money. In fact, when I came back, I brought one and a half tons of books. So the man at the customs, he has never seen a more stupid person in his life, who after seven years didn't bring a refrigerator, didn't bring a TV, didn't bring anything. He was asking me, he says, you know, and you know, these boxes that I packed my books, they were all Black Knight whiskey and everything because those are freely available. So he thought that there was something in that. So I told him, I see you can look in every box. If you find a single bottle of Black Knight whiskey, please take it. He just kept on telling me that, it's just, you know, the, the Janoon. Why I'm telling you is this because this, if I could do it, I'm sure there are hundreds and thousands of this uh, in this country. There are people who will follow this journey. And it is my desire to tell you that you can also do that. So did I, I did my PhD in mechanical engineering from the pioneer in solar energy. Solar energy was just coming up in those times. And I was, I was on the Government of India scholarship. And I was the first scholar from India to go and work in solar energy. And solar energy was, people had not heard about it. And I was very fortunate to go and work with one of the pioneers in, in the world in solar energy at the University of Florida. And also I met my wife. So that was the best education that I get. In a fit of madness and arrogance came to India. I have written a book on this, what made me go from IIT Kanpur to America and come back. It is a very well-known book. It's read extensively in the Silicon Valley and etc. Unfortunately, it does not inspire anybody to come back. But they read it and they like it very much. But uh, that's all. Badness that I will do wonderful things, not knowing the ground reality. When I came back to Fulton, where you could had to go to Pune to make phone calls, then the reality hit. Then I said to myself, what have I done? Because I was getting letters from America, why don't you come back, etc. And I said to myself that if I will do the same thing as the rest of the Indians do, then I'll be one data point in this millions of Indians who are there. Because I, I, I was very proud. I used to give lectures to the students there that we should all go back and help India. And I said, if I do the same thing, and that is where I, was I have been inspired by Gandhiji, when Gandhiji said, you have to be the change that you want to see. If I said, if I do that, then what is the point of my talking? And that was the last time we ever thought of going back. 
arrogance that I will change India. India did not change me. In, uh, India changed me. I did not change India. India is a very old civilization. When Gandhiji, the greatest, according to me, the greatest yogi could not change it, what a foolish person I was to think I'll change. But that was arrogance. And that arrogance is what made me do things. But I think that if you have that arrogance, it's a good thing. You will not change, but it will help you in looking at things from a different point of view. So it was a detoxification of Anil Rajwanshi when I came back to rural Maharashtra. Living in rural India taught me humility, spirituality, and sustainability. Humility in the sense that the problems are infinite. Even in seven generations, I cannot solve them. That's the humility. And that is where all of you who have the technology, the wherewithal, try to attack some of them. Because if we can do that, then we can really become Vishwakuru. Because India's problems are the problems of the world, third world. And we have the technology, we have the mind. And if we change the lives of these rural poor through our technology, we will show the world. We will not show the world by doing something else, but we will show the world by this. And that is how I feel that we have the young people, the genetic material, the knowledge, and the technology. And I'll give you some challenges. And you as aeronautical engineers, if you take the challenges, then I think you will help in solving it. Since 1981, I have tried to practice all these, but it is not always successful. It's a work in progress. It will continue. Be foolish. Wonderful things are done when you first jump, then find out where you are. If I had not done that, if I had thought very deeply, probably I would have never come back. That is where most of, the, most of you do. You all the time keep on thinking after graduation. What if I go there, I'll get more money, what I will I do here, what, this is all nonsense and you will not achieve anything. And I keep on giving, again I'll ask you, how many of you read Panchatantra? See, this is the tragedy. You are all product of this country, the great classics of this country you don't read. And you'll be surprised that that was written 5,000 years, God knows, we don't even know. And it's so wonderful. All the modern, you are all our managers. You're going to be managers. Read. Panchatant will teach you everything about management. Do you understand? Go to the library and read Panchatant. Not the comic books, the old Panchatant. Some five or seven volumes. So in Panchatant, there is a very nice story. A jackal and a cat, they meet in the center of the jungle. The jackal is very smart. He says, how many ways you know if a tiger comes? So the cat says, I know only one way, I just climb up the tree. Then the cat asks the jackal, that how many ways you know? He says, I know hundred ways. I can go here, I can do this, that, etc. Because the jackal wanted to show. And a tiger came. The cat simply jumped and vanished in the tree. And this guy was still thinking, what should I do? And the tiger ate him up. And this is where the problem lies with a lot of the youngsters. You are all the time thinking about the different alternatives. Take one alternative and do it. And when you do it, it shows you a totally different path. It shows you a lot of different paths. Because as you start doing it, the paths become visible and you can do a lot of things. But you are all the time thinking about what should I do and 10 people will come and tell you, you will never do anything in life. And this is what is very important. So I just simply came and jumped. And then I found out where I have come. And then I tried to utilize whatever it is. The most important requirement for staying and working in rural India is to have a genuine and passion. It nullifies all the pinpicks and you don't care what people will say. Your own passion and happiness is the guiding force. And that gives you the focus to work on certain areas. The country can only progress when bright engineers, scientists, and managers with dedication solve the problems of rural India. That will also help make India a Vishwakuru, as you talked about. In fact, I always feel that you are wasting your time being a manager. Be a good engineer. 
all great companies were set up by great engineers managers came later on if you don't have anything to work with what will you manage and work with comes when you have technologies when you have something which is useful for mankind i and my wife run this institute called nari and she's the um, president this is our institute these are all different buildings when i came this was a flat piece of land except the first building that you see on the top that was there and after that the buildings came slowly slowly it was registered as a trust in 1968 by my father in law mr bv nimkar who was also padm shri in 2006 and we developed technologies for sustainable development we have around 110 acres of irrigated farm now mr gadkari has made six lane highways so lot of our farm is being taken by these six lane highways very sad because we are losing very good prime farm land for these highways which are useless anyway and we have 4500 meter square of buildings and workshops we do work in r&d in agriculture renewable energy animal husbandry and sustainable development and we try to use the modern tools of science and technology for solving rural problems mostly it is technology development and some extension because we do work with the farmers and shepherds we have very small staff or 25 and it keeps on going up and down sometimes it is mostly going down because we don't get enough people to come and work in rural areas for r&d and the most important thing is we do work on shoestring budget so what you will do in 10 crores we can do in one in 10 15 lakhs and i am very much sure that all of us can work in less money if you want to work and the history of great inventions have been the history of frugality just that you think deeply and you can solve a lot of problems rather than putting in huge amount of money in fact uh, you have heard about cavendish lab rutherford lord rutherford lord rutherford produced i think 25 nobel laureates in his cavendish lab one of the largest number of nobel laureates he used to have a very big sign we don't have money americans have so let us think and all the great things came in fact there was a very famous uh, there was a friend of mine who did his phd under a nobel laureate who worked with uh, lord rutherford so when he came he wanted to work in low temperature physics so um, uh, rutherford told him to do the winding of the motor and he used to curse him day and night for one and a half months because that is the time it took him to rutherford told him if you understand how the motor works you will do work in low temperature and later on he got the nobel prize in low temperature after a long time but he said i learned so much in doing work with my hands in trying to develop the uh, devices etc so this is what we should be looking at you in hal have so much of technology see what you can improve upon for solving the problems which exist around bangalore or any other place and that is what the modern systems are mostly we get funding from government of india and other other agencies in agriculture we work on sweet sorghum do you know sorghum jowar i mean we are from rural area quite number of them so what are you doing in urban area you have farm you have parents so why don't you go and help them you are engineer what engineer are you we go and help your father in the farm will you eat nuts and bolts will you eat software will you eat food which your father grows do that this is the biggest tragedy that we have in this country we don't have good people to work in agriculture because agriculture is the most important thing survival of mankind depends upon agriculture and agriculture if it is not improved it will be that is the end of us will not eat software etc so this is a very wrong thing that we are talking about we should be focus more on the farming and doing things better and it requires a huge amount of technological in intervention very modern technology in farming so we introduce the sweet sorghum in india in 1970s sorghum you get the grain where you eat the bakri today 
Prime Minister is talking all the time about millet. We have been working in millets since 1970s. And what we did, we bought the seed from the America, which was a sweet um, sorghum, and we bred with the local maldandi. So we got the very nice grain on the top that you see in the first picture. The stem is as sweet as sugarcane. We produce syrup, and I pioneered the first program of ethanol from sweet sorghum. And I took it back later on because I found that ethanol was the wrong thing to do. So we are proposing now more and more of syrup. But now there's a very major program in this country on producing sweet sorghum ethanol. Mr. Gritkari is pushing very much. And with the millets, everybody is pushing for everything connected to the millets. So you can produce alcohol, syrup, grain, and fodder. In fact, in 87, we set up the first, as you see in the, where is the pointer? This pointer on the top. The, the, the first. So the first, first photograph. The, the, this, this was the first solar-powered distillation plant, producing ethanol from sweet sorghum. This was set up in '87, in our institute. And from far and wide, people used to come. They said, you know, this is amazing. Germans thought that we were making fools of them because they were using petri dishes to produce ethanol. And we had set up the, set up the pallet plant in a rural setup. What I am trying to tell you is that we can do wonderful things if we want to do it. At the time, there was no infrastructure, no internet, nothing, but still we could do it. Then we started work on the syrup, and this is the syrup that we sell now. We are the only people in the country who sell syrup. The syrup is exported to France. The syrup is used for so many pharmaceutical industry in India, and we can't keep up with it. Then we also worked on safflower. Have you eat? Uh, have you taken safflower oil? Safflower oil comes from our variety. Some of it. We were the major producers of safflower varieties. And till 2017, 40% of all the release varieties in India came from our institute. Seed is used for the oil. Petals are used as a herbal tea. And uh, vegetable and charcoal from residues. Because we believe that each and every part of the plant should be utilized for human consumption. That is a whole plant approach that we have followed both in sweet sorghum and in safflower. Then, Animal husbandry division we started in 1990 because the large number of shepherds in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Karnataka, etc., and their breeding has never been done. You know, basically, one sheep produces one kid. We said that the income of the farmers could be double, as what the prime minister keeps on saying, and that could happen if we produce some mechanism by which they started start producing twins. So we developed the. We found out the FEGB gene. We introduced in the Deccani sheep, and they produce twins. And it has become a very major program. And most of the program in Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, they use our FEGB gene, our Nari Swan, to produce and increase the flock. And I believe that the precision agriculture and hydroponics, that's where the very high technology of the engineers will come in picture through the drone technology, through the autonomous machines which will be running on electric um, uh, electricity, they are the future of farming. Because today, since you all, there are quite a number of you who come from um, background from farming, but you don't know anything about farming. Today, the biggest crisis is there no labor. All the labor wants to go is in the factories. And so more and more mechanization will come. And Indian farms are small farms, two and a half acres on average. So we need small machines, and which means that huge amount of technological input is required to make those autonomous machines. So the farmer simply just calls the company. They will bring these machines, do all the farming for him, and produce the end product. It's happening slowly, slowly, but it requires much more technological input because we don't have the machines. All our machines are imported from these farms from America and Europe, which are 1,000, 2,000 acres farms, which are not fit for the small farms that we have. And that is where the technological input goes. 
So rather than doing some esoteric work, do this work. This is a great challenge. This is right up your alley in engineering, and this will help the country. And if we improve the productivity, we will do wonderful things because agriculture is a huge industry. It, it is one of the biggest industries, if you look at it very carefully. In the renewable energy work, which is what I did, we worked on household cooking and lighting. We developed lanterns and alcohol stoves. In fact, uh, we pioneered the development of stoves which ran on vodka. How many of you drink? All of you drink. Come on, don't be shy. This uh, engineer that I hired, he came from Uttarakhand. So I asked him, you know, I, I used to always ask my engineers, what is the biggest problem in their uh, area? He says, uh, drinking illicit alcohol is the biggest problem. Uh, the men drink and they beat up the wife, and the wife has to go climb very many kilometers to collect firewood. I started thinking that can I utilize that uh, alcohol that they distill to run a stove. And we pioneered, in fact, the first uh, stove in the world which runs on pure vodka, 50% alcohol, 50% water. And some of you who are heat transfer people will know that water does not burn. But we made it part of the system, designed the stove, so that it produces a very beautiful blue flame. And this is what we got the award from the Queen Victoria, of Princess Victoria. In fact, there were two of us who got the award. One was Tesla Motors and us. We, the NGO, and Tesla Motors. So the setting was a Nobel Prize setting, the same type of thing. But uh, so there was a very big write-up in the papers. Normally, you keep on running after the government to get funded. This time, the secretary himself called me. What can we do? So I was very thrilled. I said, you know, we'll take a project of putting 100 such stores in the rural huts, which don't have good, you know, they cook on uh, biomass. This is done. So they almost sanctioned the project. And uh, I advertised that, you know, this project has been sanctioned. And I got a jeep load of people in the police uniform from Satara. That who gave you permission? I said, the government of India gave us this project. He says, but the permission has to come from us. Because excise department is the most corrupt department in every, New York Karnataka is a very classical example of that. And uh, so I said, but you know, this is a government of India project. He says, whoever it may be, it may come from the God, but the permission to distill alcohol will have to come from me. Then we found out that we cannot do that because when I read the whole program of alcohol and you as I, I asked, you know, how many of you drink? How many of you, come on, tell me. Yeah. So do you drink in the pub or you come and drink in your house? In house. How do you drink, uh, bring the, your liquor? Army canteen, but most of the time when you go to buy the liquor, it will give you, I don't drink, but I'm just telling you, that it is uh, in the black bag, etc. Because you have to have a license. Storage of alcohol, you have to have a license. So anybody can be, you, you can be caught. And this is the biggest problem. So I asked, I said, no, how can we uh, change it? He says, you have to get a legislation to change it. So I called up, you know, some of the politicians, etc. He said, this is the biggest <laughs> money making. Why should we change it? What it is. When Sharad Joshi, the great uh, farm, uh, he said, most of my people uh, produce uh, illicit alcohol. I will help you. But uh, nothing happened. So this is a very major problem. Anyway, then ethanol from sweet sorghum, detoxification of distillery waste. This is also what we did. All the work that I'm telling you is on all our own website. Please go through it. Then we were the, as, as it was uh, t told to you in the, about we were the national policy for energy self-sufficient taluka. And, you know, I come from Lucknow and I was very, much troubled by the rickshaw pullers. So I did the initial work of really designing a new rickshaw, this is 1995, making it electrified, etc. So very proud now, there are millions of these electric rickshaws. I haven't gotten a single penny, 
my patent is still the first patent in the country or anywhere on electric rickshaws but uh, now they have become very big so these are the small things that we did and it has uh, um, affected the country then we are now working on this very interesting technology of supplying clean drinking water to rural schools because most of the rural schools have very poor water and through rain water harvesting and solar um, uh, you know purification we are trying to set up this unit in the school and hopefully it can go up on large scale and all our work is written on the romance of innovation this is a book that i have published and is available free of cost in the so i'll tell you a little bit about what we have achieved because of our work on the biomass around 2500 megawatt biomass based power plants have been set up in this country what are they at this stage i do not know but because of our work the biomass mapping of each taluka has taken place our report became the standard for mapping and the government of india did all the mapping of the whole country so that is was one positive thing then there is a national sheep tuning program based upon our work from kanyakumari to shrinagar all over the country then the use of sweet sorghum for ethanol and syrup production not only in india but all over the world and e rickshaws concept came from 1990s from nr ever and the use of ethanol as a household cooking and lighting fuel so we didn't do it but now there's a very major program in africa and latin america which uses our work and it is now spreading through the world bank and etc and alcohol ethanol cooking is a very big thing in most of these countries and the one of very interesting thing we did we when we were working with these uh, poor people in the huts we started asking them about different questions you know when you go and work you should look at all other things and we found that they were eating very poorly and they were spending many much more money on uh, the medicines and for a poor person the big best medicine is uh, food so we developed this whole concept of rural restaurant and this concept was taken by amma jalalitha and became amma's kitchen and now it has become the uh, you know the shiv bhojan in maharashtra so almost 1 to 2 crores thalis and the whole thing came from our work in 2012 and it is written up and uh, you know all of these people have followed and another thing is frugal innovation all our projects in the last 40 years were done in less than 10 crores and that is what something which i think each one of you can think about rather than having big labs big funding and very little work you can have less funding think deeply and you can do wonderful things and then we have got many national and international awards and a very small ngo with two padma shrees and both in science and you know, engineering is quite an effort quite a achievement so what are the challenges 60% of india's population lives in rural areas rural folks have the same number of neurons as everybody else they are no different the aspirations are same they look at the internet they want to have the same quality of life as you and i have and why shouldn't they it is our job it's our responsibility to give them that quality of life and that is what is nation building improving the quality of life is real nation building requires excellent engineers and entrepreneurs need excellent r&d and high technology for rural areas this is my challenge to you and this is a challenge you are mechanical engineers aeronautical engineers develop a fan which produces pushes the maximum air with a minimum power because this one single invention will can make the life of poor people very nice they can have so many other things but this cooling or environment inside their huts or inside their small rooms improve that is very important and you are all aeronautical engineers you work in uh, the engines for producing power and etc work on this and this is not a trivial problem this is a very very deep fluid mechanics problem and if you do that you will also improve the design of the your uh, aircraft engine and to my mind the jet will be replaced at least inside the atmosphere by these very efficient systems 
and already the uh, all these hovercrafts, all these uh, drones, they are working on electric small electricity. And if you produce a fan which pushes maximum air with minimum power, then you would have improved tremendously the design of the drone also. It's a great challenge. As corporate managers think of reducing profits for rural infrastructure, that is your contribution to society. Change yourself and your immediate surroundings, that is what Gandhiji has taught, and is called is giving back to society. So what is the way forward? Increase your intellectual capital, you're all young, impressionable age. What you do here at this stage will define you for the rest of your life. Strive for excellence in whatever you do. Don't be mediocre. And don't count simply time that once I get into this, I'll get enough money, retirement plan. You will not achieve anything in life. At the age of 40, 50, you will feel very, you are very shallow. You have not achieved anything. And this is because I, I know a lot of youngsters, they may be getting a lot of money, but at the age of 40, 50, they start questioning, what have they done in life? Do it right now. Practice spirituality. It will help you reduce greed and make you ethical. This is the most important thing. And if all the teachers who are sitting here, please teach your students. They can all be taught engineering, they can all be taught mathematics, they can all be taught everything, but ethics. And ethics should be a part of each and every course. It should be continuously hammered. It is, should not be another subject, because again, you will be passing exam, because all the life of Indians is just passing exam from one exam to another. Please, ethics is the most important thing. And if you are ethical, you will feel yourself happy, the um, uh, company that you work will be happy, and that is really a nation building. Because if you do that, then it will help everybody. My spa, uh, you know, I live what I preach, I live a sustainable life. I have written a lot on that. It is, it is very well known now. A lot of people um, uh, use it in their uh, uh, coursework. Please read that, how I live. How we, how we live. And in a very small amount of energy, we live a very simple and nice life. Because we are connected through the internet, we are connected with uh, so many things. And uh, you can live a very nice and simple life. Spirituality will also help you focus on the challenges, help you develop genuine, be attached to the story of India, and help solve the problems of this great country. Attachment to the story of India is the most important thing. Most of you go abroad because you are not attached to the story of India. You, don't, you think everything is bad in this country. I have met large number of people in, in America, and I, I asked them, I said, why do you leave? And they'll give me a whole re number of reasons. You know, this, this happens, that happens. Look at the tragedy, the amount of baggage, mental baggage they are taking, as if nothing bad happens in America or other places. We gloss over it, because we are attached too much to our roots. Be attached to the story of India. And that can only happen when you read the great traditions, when you look back at the history, read the history of India. Read even 200, 300 years of India. How the people fought for the independence, what sacrifices people did, and I think you will achieve something in your life, and you will also be inspired. Indians do wonders abroad, why not here? This is how we started. You are the future of this country, and so help to become great. Be associated with NGOs like us. As I said, I'll be very delighted to have one or two interns or engineers also help us in uh, solving some of these problems through technology. And uh, this will be your contribution to society. Don't think about the money. I'll pay you very little, give you a free place to stay, but a tremendous challenge. And if you are afraid of challenges at this stage in your life, then you will not amount to anything. And join the bank. Why do I are you interested in engineering? Bank will give you a lot of money and nothing else. So let's work together. A happy individual is the first step in nation building. When you are happy, you feel that yes, you have something to contribute and to help the nation building. And I believe that the mantras of India's and the world's development should be spirituality plus high technology. This is what I write. This is my latest book. And I believe that the ancient Indian philosophical thought with the modern technology 
is how we should develop this world and this country. And we will show a new mantra. India is, has been very proud of giving new thought periodically through the history of mankind, Buddhism, Jainism, yoga, so many things. And this can also be Gandhiji's non-violence. And this could also be a new mantra, how we develop the world in a sustainable manner. India has huge problems. It is better to solve them here rather than those of Western countries. How many of you actually work on Western countries' problems? Because you want to publish in some international journal. There are so many problems here. Even in your own um, development of aircraft, why have we not developed uh, a nice helicopter or whatever it is? You know, people say that we have developed heli helicopter, helicopters. But there are so many things, still challenges. Let us build together a great India. Nari would love to having few bright engineers and entrepreneurs. Help in our design. There's so much to be done. And when we all work together for common good, that is nation building. And I'll end my talk by telling you a story. The story is a tale from our ancient scriptures, the Puranas. It is a typical Indian story of a sage and his disciples. The sage asks his disciples, when does the night end? And the disciple says, at dawn, of course. The sage says, I know that, but when does the night end and the dawn begins? The first disciple who is from the tropical south of India replies, when the first glimmer of light across the sky reveals the fronds of the coconut trees swaying in the breeze, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. The sage says no. But the second disciple who is from the cold north ventures, when the first streaks of sunshine make the snow gleam white on the mountain tops of the Himalayas, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. The sage says, no, my sons. When two travelers from opposite ends of our land meet and embrace each other as brothers, and when they realize they sleep under the same sky, see the same stars, and dream the same dreams, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. And I feel that when we scientists, technologists, and privileged citizens like you light up the lives of rural population through technology and resources, then it will be true nation building and will bring in the dawn of a new and prosperous India. Thank you very much. Questions? Did I bore you? This was another class for them. Sir, first of all, thank you for your contribution to our Indian society. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, during COVID time, my maternal uncle lost his job. He was working in Gujarat. So he and me, uh, we thought to start a fishy culture, means to uh, raise fish. So I'm from uh, Odisha, it's a coastal state. So. What happened is that we started, we uh, take, uh, there was a land, ancestral land. We uh, dig up and ma made a pond and we started fishing, uh, put some small fishes there so that they can raise. But after four, four months of hard work, all the fishes died. When we went, uh, go, go, gave those samples of those fishes to the veterinary doctor, he said that because of the temperature change, the, all the fishes died. We're still not able to figure out that how that temperature change took place, and there is no such authority, uh, means uh, central authority or some uh, reliable sources from where we can get the information. Because we re uh, we work hard for the four to five months to uh, give them the chara and all those things, and he has invested a lot, nearly five to six lakhs. He has invested. I just that him in getting this. Uh, so can you suggest some of the government initiatives from where we can get help? 
uh, reliable help that uh, first of all uh, i do not know whether, whether you will get it or not there is a central fisheries um, government of india um, uh, institute you could have written to them but faster and easier thing was you are an engineer there is a tremendous amount of information available in the internet see the biggest problem is that even f finding the information from the internet because there is a lot of garbage also and that is where your vivek or the wisdom is comes in how to find out what information is good etc and then you write to those people who have said written the information a lot of people in, uh, uh, you know respond very rapidly so there is a lot of information available there are groups which are doing exactly the type of work you are doing join those groups and there is a lot of exchange of information no i i don't work in fishery so i i cannot tell you but you it is your you to find out find out do this much of homework i think you will you will you will you will find out okay no 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 challenge the internet find out about from the internet and join the groups in internet the large number of groups today instead of um, uh, giving all sort of nonsense through the whatsapp even whatsapp there are groups on fisheries etc join them a large number of such things available but do homework don't look for the switches immediate switches okay homework we had just gotten probably with the first rural institute to get internet this is 1997 and uh, i just put uh, this thing out that we need motors at the time people were not even interested in motors and a professor from mit in boston he um, told me that he can help and he put out uh, huge things and i got huge feedback not nothing this is i'm talking about 1997 this is 2023 do your homework okay there yeah, are other question because we we sometimes don't do homework ha huh? good morning sir huh? sir uh, it is a great that uh, uh, great personality like you have decided to come back from us and serve for the country but the the huh? hmm. but the, uh, the the reality is that that still 40 lakh people of our this country are working for the us Yesterday evening, only our honourable Prime Minister was telling this figure, and uh, these maximum people are from IIT and IIT and big institutes, which is funded by the government. Why the intellectuals of this country, as a government, never thought about it that uh, such people may not be allowed to go from out of the country when the tax they are studying from the taxpayers' money and contributing to another country? You see, the uh, you know free countries becomes very difficult. but we should not talk about other things we should talk about h a you are probably a professor whatever it is how do we change this culture here itself this ac academy how do you inspire these youngsters in trying to solve the problem of this country that is how it should start we should not talk about because that is uh, how most of the indians do we just simply chit chat we should actually do it just round see around yourself what the problems are and let's do it and once we start doing it you know we should always follow this nike philosophy let's do it that's what i can think of and if we if we do that we we should we can make a change so what are what about the youngsters and these girls you just i think they were bored probably they were watching their social join uh my question is sir uh, when you came back from us at that time lot of challenges were there because that time technology also we see lot of uh, feeds whether it was energy feed and renewable sources was not there now so many renewable sources are there connectivity issues are there because you have to go through wire now solar is uh, independently you can use when we came to like uh, education now that time paper books are required but today internet and all the things are available in the deepest area of the country so we have soft book and e book those problems are also solved so that time we can say there are challenges for uh, uh, changing the environment what you are telling and uh, but today i think there are a lot of 
uh, things and technology available. But still, we still say that these are challenges. Now my question is, sir, why uh, still people think our government or as an individual? Because I don't think now it is a challenge. It is only the proper distribution of the resource. No, see, all this is theoretical problem. When I came back, there was no electricity, very little electricity in Fulton. So I started reading in the lantern. Never in my life I had read in the kerosene lantern. And as an engineer, I started thinking that this stupid thing has not changed since 1870. What can I do? So we were the first people in the world to attack the problem of lanterns. We modified them. We used the heat transfer, mass transfer, made a better lantern. And then we started our program on alcohol and used the alcohol, etc. Then all around me were sugarcane growers. And after the sugarcane was harvested, the leaves were burned on the ground because this was a waste disposal problem. Because the farmers wanted their field to be ready, so they used to burn it. Now you can imagine the huge amount of pollution and what a waste. So we set up the first gasifier running on loose sugarcane leaf gasifier. The sheep and goat, these problems exist around us. So main thing is this, rather than thinking about the bigger things, what you see around you, solve it. And if you start solving one problem, it will show you the direction of where to proceed in other things. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Have you worked with farmers? You were? So go back. Go back to your farm, start doing farming, and then you will see a lot of ways in which you can develop the trust. Because farmers are no different than you and I. Who, who does not need profit? You don't need your uh, daily uh, monthly pagar? Which, which person does not want profit? And which person looks at technology? All of them. You develop a trust by giving them profits and telling them how it comes. And that is how they do. If we develop these uh, safflower varieties, fantastic varieties, but farmers would not plant them because it's difficult to uh, produce because they require a lot of um, work and etc. So unless until you give them something which gives them better yields or better profits, they will not plant. Once you give them something which gives them better yields, they will plant completely. And then they will come back to you, can I increase the yield, this happens, what should be done? So this theoretical talk, you do it. This is very wrong thinking. I hear this all the time from youngsters because you actually don't do it. If you actually start doing it, you will yourself will be able to solve a lot of the problems. Because if you are smart, you will see where the things are coming and try to solve it. A lot of things happen. When you start doing it, you will start seeing things. Otherwise, it becomes, you know, see, if you want to, it is also quality of thinking. You want to, uh, whatever you want to believe, you start thinking that. So if you don't want to do anything, the first thing you will start thinking is, what are the problems? If you want to do something, the problems don't come in picture. See? If you don't want to sit for the exam, you will give all sorts of reasons why you don't want to sit the exam. Have I answered the question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, yeah, as you said, that people are coming, going to US and then no, not coming to India, you know. So, uh, I think that why should we worry, worry about this brain drain that, uh, like, what, two or three crore people are going abroad and settle there and working for them? We should focus on rest of the 120 crore people who are staying here and uh, 
and many people are also intellectual, equally intellectual as like IIT and IIMs who are going there. So why are we focusing more on be little those people who are going to US and settle there? It is like as you said that uh, one should be happy, uh, only then he can do work. So if they, they can drive their happiness in US and they are doing work there, so the, as we said Vasudev Kutumkam is it and the whole world is a family. So if their people are going there and settling there and working for them, so it is I think equally good and we should also we should also equally equate them with the people who are coming in India. Sure, no, but who, who is the complaining about uh, so many people are going abroad? So be, like uh, uh, only only are, only bureaucrats, only bureaucrats, <laughs> and government people. We are taking pride in those people who are coming back and uh, get, uh, coming in India, and we just say that. We should not allow them to go there. We should bring them back. I think it is that we just we should give the freedom to those people and give them equal respect. And yeah, in fact, you can do. You see, a lot of times I get uh, students from abroad, Indians. They come to see their family. Then they have heard about us, so they'll come and meet me, and they say that uh, we would like to come back. I said, fantastic. And then I ask them, what will you do, etc. And then I find that probably they have not thought about it. So a lot of times I tell them that you can do much more for our work here by being in America. Definitely, sir. Because you can, so they are all very excited because this is what they wanted to hear in the first place. They didn't want to come back. And so they're very happy. So I give them the problems. They're very enthusiastic. First initial few months, some mails will come. And after that, vanish it. This is, I've seen this for the last 40 years. So the question is this, that you see the, I go and give lectures in IITs. They're very inspired, just like I'm sure that some of you, but out of sight, out of mind. After some time, no emails, nothing. Because the day-to-day -day tragedy so overwhelms them that they forget. So what is required, and that is why I'm telling the teachers here, that it is the job of every teacher to continuously keep on inspiring because this is a continuous process. And when you get inspired, then you don't think about who went there, who came here, it doesn't matter. You are here to solve the problems. You are here to make your life happy. That's all. People who are staying there and uh, abroad, they are solving problems of that country. But we should not We should not be concerned about that. We should be concerned about ourselves because a lot of, you see, all my classmates are there. The funny part is, when I came back, they all said I was doing harakari. They all said, you know, what an idiot. Because I was a very rising star. Uh, I could have been any um, big professor in any company or big whatever corporate. And I came here. And they were all making good money. This was the only thing they, they wanted. You should read this in 1970s America. You know, everything I've written. And now, uh, in my batch, I'm the most decorated, whatever it is. So they think, what, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just stayed in India. But anyway, this is everybody to their own. One should not try to impose. It is just that you should do your own thing, and people get inspired by that. That's all. I never had any uh, ideas of changing the country. That was the most stupid thing. I just changed myself a little bit. If it inspired, then it's fine. So don't think about who went there or there. Let's do the work. You know, we are the only country in the world where you can do any gundagardi, but go and take a Ganga Jal and sprinkle it, and everything will be all right. We are a touch country. We don't do things deeply. And yet, some of the greatest spiritual thought came from this country. So I always ask myself, what must be the country at that time will produce such a great thought of yoga and Patanjali yoga and so many things. And I think this must be a very beautiful, nice country. Everything was taken care of. Because what I am able to do it because for whatever personal satisfaction, my life is simple, things are taken care of. So I can think about higher things. And if we can make the youngsters do the same things, rather than be too much bothered by everything else, rather than your own life, this is what the problem is. If you look at yourself, what you can do, you'll be much happier. That's my parting shot. Yes, any other question?
thank you sir uh, for your uh, wonderful uh, this one uh, inspiration speech and uh, here you told that spirituality and uh, religion are two different things spirituality te uh, teaches us like uh, uh, samasta loka sukhino bhavantu and all those things so uh, have you any time tried to um, bring this in a i mean to approach with the authority to include this as a syllabus in the this one so that i i, I never approach authority i always believe that internet provides me a tremendous platform because we have to teach this at the age early age to the students so that uh, uh, your uh, nation building or uh, uh, universe building will happen automatically if they uh, learn these things are you a teacher uh, no i am not a teacher so even if you are not a teacher teach your wh whoever about these things and that's the only way you can do and then you know you can tell them to read such things in the uh, net instead of reading some kabar because ultimately these things should spread on their own if you force anybody you know uh, i do not know whether you have children or whatever it is does any child want to go to school they mostly are do not want to do that we force them and then thinking that they will become interested in etc and then this is a we continuous process because we started a school for our children when they were young and uh, so i discussed with my daughter who is running the school so what happens is that if you inspire in whatever way then the children will learn on their own and that is far more um, positive thing than forcing them because for if you force them that is why when i talk about ethics a lot of people say no we'll have course in ethics there is a whole basis of ethics is, is finished if you have another course it will become a passing exam it has to be ingrained in you continuously yes yes no don't force don't yes we have i think we have enough, enough time uh, this question answers is the most interesting thing sir good morning sir uh, sir uh, my question is in agriculture uh, there are a lot of problems but the primary problem is like uh, uh, selling your crop after doing like 6 months or 7 months of toiling on your farmland and uh, suddenly at the at the time of selling of your product the prices will go down only at the time so it, this is a one of the you know no, uh, but the, the, no what you say is very correct and uh, this is the real major problem and uh, i have written quite a lot but i don't have any answer because this is a policy issue uh, suddenly you know we can, you know our farmers are so fantastic if you want them if you help them they can produce anything in the world rajiv gandhi gave a national technology mission on oil fields and we became almost self sufficient in oil drinking uh, eating oil and today uh, we are importing oil at the same level as our petroleum products because we are the largest consumer of uh, vegetable oil and there is no reason why our farmers cannot produce the seeds for the oil it is the policy that has to be changed and i don't have any answer because there are so many you know i have seen the world enough i know a lot of ministers etc so we don't have any, i don't have any answer which i can openly share in the but uh, we need better policy as an plan unless we make it lucrative yes, sir, uh, of course I mean, of course yes. people won't go back excellent because you see a farmer is a multi purpose entrepreneur from the same piece of land he produces different products and the sole reason why he is doing it besides farmer are you a farmer yes sir so farming is you know this is a way of life i think people feel happy to farm and if they can make money i don't think they will change is a stupid politician who say you know you do something else this is very bad because farming is you know it helps you in so many things when you see the crops grow they like your baby you see your greenery i live in a farm i live uh, have all the greenery around so it's a very nice feeling so i think this is something which we should literally do it to help the farmers yes sir Anything else? Is this whole row of girls totally silent? Either they.
saturation or uh, they are thinking about something else. Are you afraid? Uh, are you afraid? Why? You are not afraid then you should ask. I have gone to the smallest schools in the rural Maharaj and the children are very smart and especially the girls. They ask very pointed questions. As you grow older, I think you become shy. Yeah. Nothing? Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you, sir, for an informative and inspiring speech and sharing your thoughts on nation building, where you stated creating a happy and wholesome environment is nation building, and on passion, which helps us to focus on work and produces a powerful mind, and your concept on frugal innovations, attachments to the story of India, giving back to society brings happiness. I am sure that, sir, it will benefit both our professional and personal lives. I request for a big clap for our today's speaker. <laughs> I request our CBO ma'am for a few words to the participants and summing up the session. Morning, friends. We have had a session after a long break. I don't know if uh, many of you, at least the vigilance officers, would have attended the previous sessions. When we bring people of eminence to speak to you and share their story with you, it is not to preach to you to do what they have done. Most of us cannot become Anil Rajvanshi. More, all of us, perhaps, will not get a Padmashri. All of us definitely will perhaps not go, go back to rural India. But what can we learn from him? See, he started his presentation with happiness is a pursuit of life, right? He ended the presentation with pursue excellence in whatever you do. These two are our keywords, whatever we do whether we are management trainees, whether we are technical people, whether we are vigilance officers, whether we are purchase officers or HR officers. In our little framework, if we pursue excellence, we will feel happy in our workspace. Remember, we spend about eight, nine hours at work. All our waking hours are at work. If you do not find happiness in what you do, you won't want to come back next morning. We are all tied to our jobs for the financial security it gives us, for the retirement benefits it gives us, for the perquisites, basically for the food it puts on the table. Therefore, it is important whether you like it or not. You may have joined HAL not because you wanted to join HAL, because you needed a job. All right fine. Most of us are not blessed to be extremely happy in our careers. That's okay. But we remember we work at this career or job for about 30, 35 years. In that, and that takes away the prime time of your life, right? If you are to find happiness through this, even if you have other hobbies, even if something else makes you happier, whatever, it's all right. And how can you find that happiness? You can find happiness by trying to be good at your work. Because when you're good at your work, you get appreciation. When you get appreciation, you feel good about yourself. And when you feel happy with yourself and what you do, then you are nicer to people. 
So you create that framework of happiness. And when you create that framework of happiness, sometimes or most times it replicates. And in, when, when it replicates, you create a happier department or a happier organization and it grows. I now work in vigilance. For the first time I'm working in vigilance. And when I came, when I got this uh, um, deputation, I was not happy because I thought vigilance was a very negative field. I didn't want to become a chief vigilance officer. I came because if I had not taken this deputation, I would have been debarred from deputation for five years. And I had about six and a half years or seven years when I came here before retirement. So I took it fairly unhappily. But after coming here slowly over a period of time, my attempt has been to ensure that I do not harass people, that I do not make people very unhappy, and that I try to improve systems within HAL using the HAL culture, because the culture I come from is very different. What is a crime there is not a crime here. All right, so I have to adjust to this culture, and I have to see what improvement I can make within this culture. And whenever a report is written, uh, to give you an example, when CVC, the Chief Vigilance Commission, or MOD, the Ministry of Defense, gets a complaint and they ask me for a feedback, and I know that the people involved are fairly decent human beings who have tried to do decent work in HAL. And I write a report giving it a thrust that there has been no great mistake committed, which has led to a huge loss. And there has been no motive, more importantly, mistakes we all make. And that report gets accepted by CVC or MOD. I feel a great sense of happiness. Because that report only I could have written, or my team could have written. It's wrong to use the word I. All right, to that extent, you have made a difference to HL. And then I believe that I've earned my salary for that day. So if all of us attempt to do this, so I'm saying this, even while I say I don't greatly enjoy vigilance work. So you need not particularly be a great engineer. You need not particularly be very superior in whatever you do. But if you add some value to whatever has been thrust on you because of circumstances, and you make that difference. If you're an HR officer, you improve some policy, or you ensure that the policy that is there is implemented fairly, correctly. If you're in purchase, you ensure that purchase is made such that there is no loss to HA. Or if you're in the technical field, you ensure that you use whatever framework is there to ensure that whatever product you're manufacturing is the best that is possible in the given framework, then you will feel a little happy. You would have made a difference. You would have added value. And then you will achieve excellence, limited excellence, in whatever you are attempting to do. And through that limited excellence, you will achieve happiness. Your team will notice that. You will all become leaders. If you're not already leaders, you will become leaders tomorrow. There will be a team around you. People will notice. People will appreciate. And if you don't do this, that also people will notice. And they will talk behind you. So that is what we are trying to attempt through these course of lectures. Rajanshi ji talked about Gandhiji. Many of you would not have read Gandhiji's books. So above everything else, what was Gandhiji? He was a great communicator. If you read his books, the language used is extremely simple. Just as an experiment, pick up any book, read a page, see if you can rewrite it differently so that the same communication happens. You'll find you won't be able to. The lines are very pithy. The English is extremely simple. I have noticed 
वन कॉमनैलिटी बिटवीन आर के नारायण एंड गांधी जी वेरी सिंपल लैंग्वेज बट रीच टू द टारगेट ऑडियंस ट्रमेंडस इनफैक्ट टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट राजवंशी जी हिज बुक्स आर ऑल्सो एक्सट्रीमली सिंपली रिटर्न यू मे नॉट बी इंटरेस्टेड इन वॉट ही इज वॉन्टिंग टू कम्युनिकेट बट दैट कम्युनिकेशन इज परफेक्ट what he wants to communicate he is able to communicate so if all of us try and improve our communication so that we communicate well to our target audience to the clerical staff around us to the officers around us to the management above us that itself is a big achievement so communication is important all right excellence in whatever you do is important and through that excellence comes happiness and that happiness will make you a happy person will make your family happy will make your family in office happy family at home happy and the larger extended family friends etc so let us strive to do this to achieve excellence and be happier people and then i think your job will be done and hal will become a happier organization a more excellent organization a better achieving organization and if we try to uplift people working around us your servant maid who works for you your driver who works for you and try to keep that circle happier than what you found them when they came to you i think we all would have done a little bit to make the world a better place thank you thank you ma'am for those kind words and guidance i would time to give the speaker our sincere gratitude as a token of our love and respect i request cv ma'am and dm ma'am to hand over a memento to the speaker coming to the concluding part of the session on behalf of team vigilance i thank edhma and their team for all the arrangements and facilitation and kind cooperation for the successful conduct of this program i do hope the same may be a continuing kind in future also so i request to all of you to join for the lunch at the